Many of us have used Microsoft Word or OneNote to document our projects. And I want to provide a quick demonstration of an alternative software tool that, in my opinion, is a more powerful and more usable tool for that. And that is a product called Atlassian Confluence. What we're looking at is the, the what I call a second brain of detailed information I've authored over the past 10 years or so. And in today's demonstration, I'm going to kind of explain how this can be used. But just to give you your, your bearings, we're looking at a particular what's called a space in the wiki. That's data science and sources. There are a couple of other spaces in the, in the overall site. And I can go and look at the space directory to get a, a layout. But this is the highest level of uh, organization in the wiki. And each of these spaces can be set up to have different permissions so that you could assign a, an active directory group to have editing and viewership or uh, no, no visibility of content in that whatsoever. So uh, spaces are the highest level. They give you a mechanism to compartmentalize the content within a space. So I'm going to look at uh, the SQL Server space, which is got a, a page up here already you can identify this space here so within this within a particular space you have this page hierarchy and these are subfolders they can be unlimited levels deep so uh, let's try to find an example that's got a, a fair bit of nested content some R reference and click on any page there and it updates to display in the in the right pane the, the content of that page so within this page hierarchy, again, you can have unlimited nested folders, but you can very quickly revise the hierarchy within a space by choosing view and hierarchy. So for example, if I decided I wanted this whole section to get moved up here, that's a really straightforward edit to make. Let me show you one other concept of hierarchy that comes out in Confluence and that's within a page. So, and there's a, there's a um, equivalent of this in Microsoft Word in which you can define a table of contents to uh, map the different level heads. Well, the same thing occurs here in, in Confluence. This is a number one head. It appears in the table of contents here, number one head, number two head. Just a, an optional quick reference from within a page to organize content and I can quickly jump down to this section in the page just by hitting that hyperlink. So right now we've, we've got an overview of the, the navigation and the structure of this. Let's take a look at what, it, what it's like to actually edit a page. And this particular section of the wiki here, these are notes that I authored for brainstorming about blog articles. And there's a series of articles on my website about working with census export data. This is, these are just some brainstorming thoughts that I had about, about those articles. I can very easily edit the content of this page by hitting this button. And I've got basically a dumbed down Microsoft Word editing environment and for which almost everything can be entered in using what I call heads down data entry. And by that, I mean, I never have to lift my hands up from the keyboard. Rarely do I have to make use of the mouse. There are hot keys for performing most any operation on a page. So I'm going to highlight the text and make it bold or create a bulleted list. All of these options up here are directly selectable via hotkeys. And if I just hover over the, the menu selection, I can see that I can get a number three head by hitting control three. I'm going to cancel the changes I've made to to this page and just show you another another way of getting at that. If I just type the question mark, I'm presented with a, an index of those shortcut keys. These are uh, top level things. So if I wanted to create a new page anywhere, all I need to do is type C. If I want to edit the existing page, I hit E. If while I'm editing a page, I want to change a head or um, embed a hyperlink, these are all shortcut keys. And, and this is something that really, I think, distinguishes its, um, the Confluence product from some other tools, 
is the high usability and the speed with which you can perform these sorts of things. And Confluence to me is a tool that after, after you use it a while, you forget that they're using the tool. It's just an extension of your, your thought process. And it, it's a, just a very intuitive, efficient mechanism for getting thoughts down onto um, a digital format. I'm going to close this dialog and demonstrate what it's like to create a new page. I'm going to position my cursor here and then type the letter C. That will create a page underneath this particular section of the hierarchy. I give it a title, tab to the main body of the page, and just start typing. If I wanted to, I could insert a table. These are all pretty basic capabilities in any, any of the authoring environments you might use. A couple of unique features though to Confluence are the ability to embed what are called macros. These um, go in a couple of different directions. We've already looked at the table of contents macro. Another example would be a, a, a draw.io diagram. This is a plugin from which you can very quickly jumpstart the creation of particular visuals. When I save and exit this, that visual will be embedded on this particular page. Incidentally, that was a draw.io plugin, but if I wanted, I could choose from a variety of alternative plugins. Perhaps you use uh, Balsamic or the Gliffy diagram with other applications in your office. These are all available as plugins to the Confluence system. There's a rich ecosystem of plugins available Let's go back to our sample page and I would like to demonstrate how you can embed an image. And so I'm going to use screen, screen grabber utility. I've just captured that particular part of the screen in the, in the paste filter. All I need to do is hit control V. It will automatically embed my image. If I click on that image, I can scale it up or down. I can give it a border. I can attach a hyperlink. It's all pretty straightforward. And this is in marked contest, contrast to the way images work in a SharePoint wiki, for example, in which you're forced to save the image on your computer and then use a common dialogue sort of sequence to reference that image. It's, it's a, a relatively cumbersome process compared to the way Confluence allows. So this content really is gibberish, but we're going to save it. And when we do, we'll see that page is, is appearing now as part of the wiki. Very straightforward method of, of authoring content. I'm going to go up to this page for just a second and show you some other features. If I wanted to, I can look at the page history. You can roll back to any one of these versions if you needed to for some reason. So there's a volume of content here. There are hundreds of pages of content at this point in this wiki. And at a certain point, you may forget where you've put content. So I want to demonstrate the search capability within Confluence. And this will, this will search if you want it to across all spaces. And all you really need to do is hit the forward slash. And let's say I want to look for pages I have authored about the Drupal twig subsystem and you'll see a, a variety of different pages here and I can quickly jump to those pages. An alternative way of retrieving content is to go to the confluence page icon where it will show the pages that I've recently worked on, the pages that I've recently viewed. There's that twig page we just looked at. The vendor of this product is called Atlassian. And they have created a number of other applications. Uh, this is the Atlassian homepage. Uh, one of which is a product called Jira. And I've used this program for a while. It's similarly a very uh, high usability sort of application. And I just use this for personal productivity at this point and keeping track of uh, tasks that I'd, I'd like to get accomplished. And what we're looking here is the, the Jira list of recently completed tasks. And this is a, it's called a JQL syntax. This is a, a method of filtering. 
issues within my Jira installation, there's a really neat integration possible between Jira and Confluence. And I'm gonna, I've just copied that JQL selection criteria. I'd like to show you how you can embed this quickly within, within Confluence. So I'm gonna go back to my sample page and really what I'm simulating here could be if you were doing a software development process and you wanted to uh, communicate to your end users what issues were resolved in a particular release. This is a really quick way of leveraging the documentation effort you may have already done in JIRA within more of a wiki format. It's a, a very simple thing to do. I'm gonna go back here and choose a JIRA issue filter macro. And when I do, it'll prompt me what kind of JQL would you like to use? This is where I'll paste the filter. If I hit enter, it will update and show me this. And then I can say, I don't really need to display this column or that column. When I save, this is a, dy a dynamic link to the JIRA system. You can kind of get a sense for how this might be leveraged for supporting uh, a software development process. I've used Confluence since 2005, off and on, and actively over the last 10 years, I've pretty much put all of my technical reference notes into Confluence. This is a great company that creates this product, and if you host it yourself, it's a really cheap piece of software. It's $10 for 10 users. That gives you 12 months of update for um, what, less than a dollar a month for 10, for a total of 10 uh, signed users. They do three or four major releases every year. They have continuously improved this product. I like the fact that everything that I author is stored in SQL Server. Uh, it's a very quick way of creating a backup of all your content. I also like how it has AD integration. Um, I was logged in at the time of uh, the beginning of this video, but all of this is protected behind the Active Directory sort of uh, authentication process. Um, just in recap, I find Confluence to be a really usable product. You lose awareness of the tool, you can focus on what you're trying to document. And it's just a really highly efficient data entry authoring environment. And that's really, to me, in contrast to OneNote and Word, in which oftentimes I'm I'm more focused upon trying to make it look pretty or concerned about margins or not sure what it would look like if I have two blocks of, of windows and one note. Confluence is a simpler system in many ways. To me, it's easier to read the content and it's much easier to author. So anyway, I hope this has been helpful to you if you're evaluating a software tool to document your software projects.